Welcome to Juran Institute's Quality Tools and Tutorial Series, Impact Control Matrix. In this quick tutorial, we will define what an impact control matrix is, how it can be used to prioritize the impact that specific causes have on a particular issue, and understand how to assess this against the control the team has to impact these causes. First, we must ask ourselves, what is an impact control matrix? An impact control matrix is a tool for systematically prioritizing the level of impact potential root causes may have on a process, while also denoting the level of control a project team may have over them. Impact control matrices aid project teams in prioritizing their focus and reaching consensus. The key benefits of impact control matrices are that they allow project teams to consider all of the potential root causes respective to one another. They can also help project teams to avoid wasting considerable times and resources on causes that will have little impact on the problem or defect that the team is trying to improve. Often, the process of completing this tool in a team setting drives constructive cross-departmental discussion as to the relevance of potential root causes. By drawing the following matrix on a whiteboard or butcher paper, this exercise can be easily conducted with a team. It is highly advisable to write your potential causes on sticky notes, as many teams find that they may move their potential causes around on the matrix a number of times throughout the course of the exercise. The impact control matrix is comprised of two intersecting axes. The top axis is a scale of the level of impact that each individual potential cause may have on the problem being addressed by the project team. The causes that have been developed are ranked high, medium, or low relative to one another. The higher the impact of the cause, the further to the left it will appear on the matrix as depicted by these directional arrows. The axis to the left is a scale of control or the level of ability that the project team has to change the potential cause of the problem or defect that the team is trying to improve. Similar to the axis for impact, the higher to the top of the matrix the potential cause, the greater the ability of the project team to change or control it as indicated by the directional arrows. A blank control matrix will be comprised of nine total cells, each indicating varied levels of impact and control. It should be noted that each cell may contain multiple potential causes. In some cases, you may have cells left entirely blank, while others contain multiple potential causes. Now, let's assume that our project team takes a look at their first potential cause. For the sake of the example, let's say that they agree that the potential cause is both high impact and high control. This potential cause would be placed in the top left portion of the matrix. Now, let's assume the next potential cause is low impact and low control. This potential cause would be placed in the bottom right portion of the matrix. Now let's assume that their third potential cause is high impact and medium control. This potential cause would be placed in the top left portion of the matrix. It is common when using this tool to adjust the locations of your potential causes as you begin to develop a more complete matrix. So do not hesitate to reassess them as you complete the exercise. It is also important to recognize that this matrix addresses only impact and control. Other considerations, such as cost and time, can also be considered when determining the level of control, but this should be considered at the discretion of the project team. Now let's take a look at an example. 
A project team has been addressing the issue of delays from the emergency department. Through brainstorming exercises and cause-effect diagrams, they have developed a list of potential causes for the delays in the process. One by one, the project team assesses the impact each cause and the control they have over that element of the process. Here are their findings. Availability of ride, medium impact, low control. Patient education, high impact, high control. Nurse to transport, low impact, high control. Release form issues, high impact, high control. Medication issues, high impact, medium control. Fax to clinic, low impact, medium control. Dressing changes, medium impact, medium control. Patient food, medium impact, medium control. Pain, high impact, high control. Crutches training, medium impact, medium control. Discharge vitals, medium impact, high control. Once the impact control matrix has been completed, the next step is to gather objective evidence and data to further confirm the impact of these potential causes on the problem the project team is trying to solve. After the causes have been proven with objective evidence and data, then the project team can move forward with generating solutions. In this case, the project team confirmed through data collection that there were significant issues surrounding delays associated with patient education, release form issues, and pain. Once confirmed, the project team moved forward with improvement efforts focused in these areas. If you would like to learn more about Duran Institute and our services, please visit us at our website, www.duran.com. You may also reach us by calling our 800 number, 1-800-338-7726, or emailing us at info at If you found this webinar helpful, please feel free to view our other tools and tutorials by visiting and subscribing to our YouTube page. You may visit it via the following link, www.youtube.com slash Duran Institute. You may also be interested in reading and subscribing to our blog, The Big Q, on current quality issues and topics at www.duran.com slash blog. You can also follow us on Facebook by searching for Duran Institute or Twitter by searching The Big Q. Thank you for your time.